One second, Google, there's two things. <laughs> uh, Bossman sent a contact request, which I accepted, and then was told that he hadn't shared his details uh, with me. So, Bossman, if you want to call in, you can have to uh, resend it. I'm also seeing messages um, in the comments that Cartesian Theist um, is uh, is around or sending messages or sending contact requests. No. Um, it's not difficult. Send a contact request to Magic Sandwich Show. Include the topic that you want to talk about. No problem. Okay, maybe he's maybe he's trying to maybe he's trying to use the power of prayer rather than the <laughs> power of sending a Skype request. There is a good chance I'm with you. Hello, sir. How are you? I'm uh, doing pretty good this afternoon. Thank you for having me. What can we do for you today? Well, um, before I get into well, the checklist of what I wanted to talk about. I just want to say that uh, defining something as selfish simply because there's some conceivable way you could trace it back to benefiting you is to, def to define selfish out of relevance. It just becomes completely pointless as a word. I would agree. Agree. I, I would tend point. to agree. Uh, all I, the only point that I was seeking to make is that I think that I actually used this expression it can be seen as an act of selfishness to give to charity. I don't think I, I went much further than that. But I think it, it, it's ah, arguable. It's not a particularly persuasive argument, but there we are. Anyway. All right. It's and a reasonable then, point, though. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk about is one of the things that I hold, I hold very valued in my life. It's a philosophy I live by. It's something I really think, Gary, your first caller, caller could have benefited a lot from and that is the, the the discipline of making happiness and I specifically use the word make not to find as if it's underneath some rock somewhere or to pursue it to imply that sometimes you might not be able to catch it because I believe no matter who you are and what society you're in you can you can make yourself happiness even if you're a king, even if you're a pauper. And this is something I've wanted to call Jafar's fallacy. That is uh, Jafar from Aladdin, Disney's Aladdin. Because Jafar's problem is that he was in a position that most in his society could only dream about. He was the grand vizier of the sultan. He lived in a palace and was rich. He had the power to surround himself with pleasures and to bar out all suffering from his life and yet, still, he wanted more. Because humans seem to be tragically hardwired to perspective. Once you perceive a normal in your life, as far as the happiness you experience and the suffering you endure, you start to wish for more. The phrase, if only I could have, is one of the most poisonous I can think of to your mind. And I'm not saying that it's intrinsically wrong to want more but it's self-destructive for your mentality to become hung up on what you don't have without the taking the time to appreciate what you do have. And your first caller, Gary, he, I could see in the background of his camera, he had a roof over his head. I heard him say he had the money to spend on heroin. Most pe a lot of people in the world don't have the money to feed themselves or their children. And this is why I say the power to make happiness no matter what position you're in, is one of the most powerful strengths you can have as a human being. And I do specifically call it a strength. Um, can I briefly come in now? Please do. I mean, I've often thought that it's one of the first things that they actually ought to teach in school is uh, to give people this feel that we are uh, a communal species and that Without that society, life gets very hard very quickly. Like you were saying, you could see he had a roof over his head. Um, nowadays, you just cut people off from the internet and they sort of wander around haplessly for a bit. Um, and I think there's a, a good argument for uh, when children are young is to essentially take them out into the wilderness for a week um, where there is no war, where, where there is... Um, essentially no heat, where there is no running water, just to give people this absolute perspective on what life is like without this huge infrastructure that people are just habitualized to and don't really notice. The second point that I would make is um, 
I think the the aspirations is clearly an important thing for actually moving society forwards. And in this sense, um, I would I would have some uh, problems with this. You know, I want is the most poisonous phrase that you can utter. In uh, what drives us is what makes a better tomorrow. Anyone else want to go? Yeah, I Mark? will. Yeah, I, 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 I so side with this. I mean, I work for uh, and have worked for companies that you have you dealing with uh, disgruntled customers on various things that they might have bought. And the complaints that I get from some of these people, I, I just, I just want to tell some of these people in the rudest possible way to get some damn perspective. You know, uh, and I'm I am dangerously close to satisfied with my own existence because, as I said earlier in the show, I've always had very good health. I've always had good vision. I've always had good hearing. I've always feel good. I've always been been terribly happy. I've been happy with the weather, but whatever it is, uh, I have a, a motorcycle that never breaks down. I'm terribly happy about that. I don't. If I had a million dollars tomorrow, I would not go out and buy another one. I have. I have one already, you know, I, I have one that I like. I'm, like I said, close to satisfied. And I don't need a whole lot to make me happier than I am. I wish other people could have that kind of perspective to enjoy what you have. Because I was told when I was a child that you don't appreciate anything you've got until you, it's gone. Or you, you don't appreciate it appropriately until it's gone. And I thought when I, as a child that that's stupid, that I'm going to appreciate what I have while I have it. And while I can appreciate it, and I'll leave it at that. It took me joining the Marine Corps to realize what a blessing it is to have such a thing as a daily shower. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's what I was really after when I was sort of saying, you know, that, that 90, probably 99% of people in society just have no appreciation of how nice it is to live in a society. Um, and that given how nice it is to live in society, um, you really ought to take more care of it to make sure that it doesn't crumble around you. One of the things that I bring up with my children often, and we've done this around the dinner table, we talk about what would the, what would life have been like. You know, you, people talk about how scary things are going to be in the future. Well, let's talk about the past for a moment. Let's talk about how scary things have already been. Where would you be, my children, you know, if this were 100 years ago? And what would your living conditions be like? And how many hours a day would you have to work in that factory? And would you have, even have compulsory school? Would you have health care? Would they have known what to do with you if you had health care? You know, what, what, it, what would it be like for a family to share a turnip for dinner and have everybody live in one room and sleep in one bed? And, and this was a reality here in the United States not that long ago. My grandparents, not kidding, my, or my great-grandparents, actually lived for years under a tarp. A, you know, poles and a tarp in the Depression. You know, think about that. This is what we're coming from, and I look at what I've got, and what I've got isn't spectacular. Yeah, there are people that, that have more money and bigger houses and stuff like that than me, but I don't need to achieve that still more to be aware that, hey, I'm not living in a tarp. Can we move in the other direction, too? What, what would life be like, quote, unquote, without suffering? What, what would that even mean? It would what, be heaven what? with God. <laughs> well, it, it, literally... <laughs> You know, I, I can't, I can't conceptualize of an existence without suffering. So, what, what really is the goal? You're talking about someone who rejects uh, existence or, or, or wants people not to have children because they're going to experience suffering on what, what sounds to me like about a one percent basis, may, maybe five percent basis. You know, I'll, I'll take those odds. I, I, I think it's, it's worth taking the the fairly good risk and and if that percentage changes down to one percent then we've got an even better risk and if that's 0 0.1 percent you know the, the balance can change and I, I guess that's what what sort of surprises me is there's no such thing as a world without suffering as far as I can imagine even let if it were simply there's not enough joy let's me, let me throw this into the uh, melting pot 
see what comes out. Um, it's always troubled me the thought of having a child and what worlds I'm introducing that child into and how would the world be like as they're growing up and getting older. And I, I'm somewhat um, pessimistic about the future. I don't, I don't see it being a particularly pleasant place. I think overpopulation is going to start really rearing its head as a problem. Uh, I think that global warming, I think that wars, I think uh, that all sorts of terrible things um, are, are coming before us. And that's, that is a concern. You know, how can I bring a child into a world that is, in my view, going to get increasingly ugly? But the, the problem is not the child, or, or, or the child may be contributing to the problem. And maybe, DPR, this is because you're talking to, you know, a bunch of people who think that science has a lot of power to overcome the structural problems of, 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 our, of our existence. Um, but I, I, can't, I can't think of giving up on something as a solution to the problem unless the problem is caring. And if caring is what's causing the suffering, then only not caring can prevent the suffering. But I don't think that's the situation. If global warming is the problem, then population reduction might be part of a solution. But that doesn't mean that we should stop having children because they might suffer. It's, it's such a defeatist position. And I don't understand why people that have that position, maybe like we got in the first call. Sorry, well, I'll it. explain this again if you want. Why would I want a child, which obviously I would love, to be brought up in a world which is increasingly ugly. I was because of the potential for it not to be ugly. I would go with Aaron's thing here that uh, what, uh, what makes you think that the world is more ugly? You scroll a clock back a hundred years and the child is living in a paradise uh, by almost every metric that you could measure. I fully accept that. As I said, I'm a pessimist and I consider that the problems such as global warming, such as wars and no, such I as overpopulation are going to, uh, th th I think that to a large degree they're being ignored and it is going to be an ugly world. I don't I, I'm think that's, pessimistic. No, I'm no, sorry. D d DPR, that, that's not the question. The question is, um, on an absolute scale, will the child live a, a happier life or a less happier life? Um, and if you take a look at it, Okay, you know, there's, there's a relative thing there, but in absolute terms, every decade that goes by, we, we uh, have better ways of dealing with disease, we have uh, technology that makes our lives easier. Um, it, where are the detrimental aspects? I agree. If I, if I had that view and I had that optimism, then I wouldn't have a problem. Okay, well, and, and people that, that do have this problem where they don't want to bring, you know, where, the, where life is suffering and they wish they weren't born and they, they don't want to contribute anything to anything and that, 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 that the world is such a horrible place, give a blowjob to your favorite pistol and take care of your own problem. But I thought we were friends, Aaron. The uh, 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 represented here are not representative of all members of the panel. <laughs> I was about to say. Uh, so, so anyone uh, following the advice Aaron has just given cannot sue us. Um, yes. <laughs> I, I was about to say, partly because you're so, going to be dead. 